We start with our interview segment and focus on Veterans Day and weekend activities at the World War I Museum and Memorial in Kansas City, Missouri. This year's event will include a special exhibition titled The Vietnam War, 1945 to 1975. Here to talk about that and all the events is Dr. Matt Naylor, president of the World War I Museum. Dr. Naylor, welcome back to Ruckus. Thanks very much for coming in. Thank you. So the end of World War I played a role in establishing what is now called Veterans Day, but originally it was called Armistice Day. Yes, it was. And it was now 101 years ago that the armistice was signed, that the war, at least on the Western Front, came to an end. And this great uh, um, end to such a tragic uh, foundering catastrophe of the 20th century. And then we commemorate that then this weekend, uh, 101 years later. Well, talk about some of uh, the activities taking place this weekend. These days, uh, Veterans Day weekend, Memorial Day weekend, at the National World War I Museum and Memorial, we play a larger role where we honour all of those who serve. So this weekend is a great opportunity to come out. The weather will be good. And uh, to be able to then enjoy the exhibits, some of our genealogy research stations, the hands-on history activities. We'll have a Huey helicopter that actually flew and was shot out in Vietnam. And then a new exhibition, the Vietnam War, as you mentioned. You have special pricing for this weekend, too. We do. For military service uh, personnel and uh, veterans, it's free and half price for everybody else, Friday through Monday. When I ask you about veterans, I asked you about this off the air because it always uh, seems curious to me. Uh, you don't have to be, if you're a veteran, producing a DD-214 to prove that you're a veteran. No, we give people the benefit of the doubt. It would be offensive if a veteran were to say that uh, they're that they served and they didn't have ID, we wouldn't expect them to. We want to honor everybody's service. You know, wars come to an end, but study of wars continues. I'm always fascinated. Uh, there is still new research into World War I, is there not? Yes, indeed, and it's very popular research. Some of these books sell hundreds and hundreds of thousands of copies. Now, sometimes the further the distance that you have from war enables you, without the fog of war, to be able to analyze and understand the circumstances in a different way than if you're closer to the events. Talk about this Vietnam exhibition, 1945. That was before the U.S. got involved. Yes, uh, it was. And this, uh, you know, it's not understood generally that the Vietnam War is linked to World War I. The fact that 100,000 Vietnamese served in France as it was a French colony uh, had a profound effect then after the war on the independence movements. Uh, half of those 100,000 served as troops, learning uh, strategy, modern military techniques. The other half served in factories as laborers, learning uh, union organizing, learning industrialized uh, production. They came back. Uh, their relationship with the French was forever changed. So on Veterans Day on Monday, what do you have planned? So on Veterans Day, our 10 a.m. ceremony will be indoors, nice and warm. <laughs> uh, Dr. Pella McDaniels is our speaker, a noted chiefs player, but a, also a professor of history at Emory University, who is an expert, acknowledged expert in the area of African-American war service. And he'll be talking around the theme of homecoming, an important topic for veterans, including those who served in the Vietnam War. One of the things I especially like about the facility and I've been there a couple of times, and that's the introductory film, the background to World War I. And I swear, if you changed a few names around right. and a few countries around, you could be describing the world as we know it today. Yeah, there are ominous parallels to the world uh, that we live in today. It's argued that the world is more like the world of 1913 than it's been in the past 106 years. What is the hands-on history segment? The opportunity for people to handle artifacts that haven't been accessioned, they're not part of the museum's formal collection, but they're part of the educational resources, to see gas masks and touch those other objects. You also have music, I believe, from that era, because I've been there and listened to it. Right. Heard Al Jolson singing some uh, songs sure, from the World War I era. Sure. sure. Uh, lo lots of uh, lots of really exciting activities throughout oh, the weekend. Okay, if somebody wants a little bit more information, we're about out of time. How do they get it? Theworldwar.org. That's the best place to go. The Theworldwar.org. All right, sir. Thank you very much. I'm sure you'll have a big turnout this weekend and on Monday. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. That is Dr. Matt Naylor. He is president of the World War One Museum in Kansas City. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus.